Hi, this is Steve Hosher with Razor Gauge, and today I'm going to talk about the Angle Master. Uh, the Angle Master consists of the Razor Gauge with special software, an angle cutting saw, this is the Scotchman SUP 500, and our Angle Master drive system, which makes the blade rotate to various angles. I'll just move the blade quickly. You can see how that works. So, the Angle Master has several features. The main screen, you can just enter linear positions and angular positions and make the positioner and the saw go to those positions. Like, for example, I can press 90 and I can put in a length of 45 for the linear and hit move position. And the two axes go to where they're supposed to go. Uh, this screen is really only useful for setup. The Angle Master is a pusher. It's not used as a stop. can be, but that's not how the software is set up. The reason we do that is so that the pusher is not receiving various angles. It's always got a square end. That way if we have a 45 or a 60 or a 30, we don't have to deal with the point dropping in behind the pusher. So we push the, the material and the angles adjust and we do the math to make sure that the overall length of the part comes out right regardless of what the uh, angle is. So, one way to use the Angle Master is to just enter manual parts. And so, if you have a drawing of a part that's got angles on both ends, you would go to manual parts. So the first thing we say, we want to tell the software is how long our stock width length is. So in this case, I've entered 96 inches and I've said the stock width is 3. We need to know the width because sometimes the point of the angle ends up away from the fence and we need to calculate where that point's going to be and that's the width comes into that calculation. So we've entered that. Now if you have a drawing that has angles on both ends and we need to enter those dimensions, um, sometimes the way the drawing is dimensioned isn't consistent or with the way the angle master measures the angles. So we have to deal with that. So to do that, we hit this button called Part Styles. And here's a representation of all the different angle configurations that could be possible. So let's choose this one. It's got a bullet nose on the front and a single angle in the back. We choose that. And so what we've done is we, we allow you to enter the dimensions in several different places so that you can match the way the angle is dimensioned on your drawing. So this angle right here could be dimensioned this way, it could be dimensioned this way, and so on. And one of these is going to get you real close to the way it's dimensioned on your drawing. So let's start with this one right here. We'll, we'll enter it this way right here. So we'll say that is 30 degrees and that this point is uh, 0.5 from the tip. And then we'll come down here and we'll say this angle is 60. And we'll say the overall length is 45. And the trailing angle, we'll say that is 45. And we add the part. So now we have those parameters in here translated into the way angles are measured on the machine. And you can see they're slightly different than the way it comes out in the drawing. Uh, now suppose I want to save this so I can run it later. So I hit save part and I enter a file name and save and that's all there is to it. If I want to open that file later I just hit open file and choose that file. So now let's cut it. We press the button that says cut the part. We hit load out. Here is a graphic representation of the overall length of the stock and here's the part we're going to cut out of it and the various angles that are going to be cut and some uh, things to check before we go. So I'm going to press move to first position. So the positioner moves and then the saw angle moves and then I would cut the part manually uh, by cycling the saw. So now I'm going to press that we saw done move to next as if we've actually cut that part. This is doing that bullet nose that's at the very beginning of that part that we made up. So we will have cut the part there, 
We remove any little drops that we've generated. Saw done moves to next. Now we're doing the 45 at the trailing end. Cut it, saw done, and now we're done with the part. And then it says, do you want to cut another part from the loaded piece of stock? We have 50 inches left. In this case, we're going to say no. But if we wanted another one, we could just run it right there. So that's how to do manual parts. Now I'm going to go to the auto list screen. This is where you get the real power. If you have a cut list that has your part information, including leading edge angle and trailing edge angle, you can download it and the auto list will optimize and run those parts. So I'm going to open a file. And now you can see here I've just got one part. And that's because I haven't. I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the sorting and define what fields are what. So when the Anglemaster software opens a cut list, it sorts it into groups. And I'm going to press the grouping list button. Now you can see we've got a lot of groups here. Um, I'm going to press cancel. I'm going to go settings and sorting. I'm sorting by material type and part description. Well, part description is not something you generally want to sort by, and that's probably why we have so many groups. So I'm going to get rid of it and update stock definition. And now I've got some parts in this group. And I press the grouping list. So now you can see I've got groups based on material only. They're sorted by material only. So now I don't have so many groups, and I've got more parts in each group. So once we have the cut list sorted into the groups that we want, um, one of the things we have to do with the angle master is tell the software which column is leading edge angle, which column is trailing edge angle. So I'm going to go to settings and configure. And I can also tell it which column is the bar length. Uh, that's if your cut lists are optimized before they get to the machine. I'm not going to worry about that now. But I do have to tell it leading angle database name. So I go over here to leading angle. The database name is user field 2. So for leading angle, I choose UF underscore 2. Um, lead angle offset is, we will say, that is if we had those bullet nose uh, type parts. And in this cut list, I don't have any of those. If we did, we would need a column for that. So I'm not going to define the, the lead angle offset. Lead angle 2 database name, again, that is for a bullet nose. It has two angles cut on the leading edge. Trailing angle database name, that is <coughs> user field 3. Save the changes. And that's all you have to do to set it up. So now, I can enter a length of my stock. <coughs> and use it. Since I have such a short part, it doesn't say anything will fit, so I'm going to enter a bigger length. So it found a piece to go in there. I'll load out. Then I'll move to the first position. and now from this point on it behaves just like it did when we were running the manual parts. So that is how the Angle Master and the Angle Master software works. Uh, we appreciate you watching the video. If you have questions give us a call at 515-232-3188 and uh, we appreciate your interest and have a great day.